Allah have mercy on all of them. He has a book, uh, The Rectification of Wealth. So the Salaf, Rahimahumullah, they used to they used to have diligence in regards to showing and clarifying uh, the virtues of wealth. Some of the companions, or the companions rather, may Allah be pleased with them, they used the wealth, they used their wealth in the best of use in defending the religion of Islam. For this reason we find that those who were less wealthy, they came to the Messenger وسلم, and they asked him, and they said the people who are wealthy, they received, they took all of the rewards, all of the all, all of the good deeds. And uh, so wealth by itself is not something that is, and being wealthy is not something that is blameworthy. And rather, it is a means of being upon righteousness and upon, oh, it is a means of doing righteous good deeds. Sufyan al-Thawri, rahimahullah, he said, uh, the wealth today is like a weapon for the believers. ومن حماية الدين للمال أنه أرشد إلى كتابة الدين أرشد إلى كتابة الدين كما قال سبحانه وتعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا إذا تداينتم بدين إلى أجل مسمى فاكتبوه فهذا أيضا من حماية المال بل إن الدين لا يغفر للشهيد الذي قدم نفسه لله عز وجل رخيصة فإنه يغفر له كل شيء إلا الدين والنبي صلى الله عليه وسلم كان يحذر من الدين ويقول لي يعني قد تأتيه كانت تأتي يعني جاءت جنازة فقال هل علي دين قالوا نعم يا رسول الله قال صلوا على صاحبكم صلوا على صاحبكم حتى لا يتهاون الناس بهذا الأمر لأن المال محترم بل جاء أن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من أخذ من من أخذ أموال الناس يريد أداءها أدى الله عنه يعني يعني أعانه الله لأدائها هذا معنى الحديث ليس أدى الله عنه يعني أنك تجعل هكذا يعني أنك لا تؤديه أنت وتظن بأن الله عز وجل يؤديه عنك بأن يعطي هؤلاء عنك وإنما أدى بمعنى أعانه الله على أدائها ومن أخذ المال يريد إتلافه أتلفه الله ومن أخذ المال يعني من الناس يريد إتلافه أتلفه الله وهذا فيه ترغيب وترهيب Also from the protection of the religion of Islam to wealth is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guided us to writing the debt and the loans, as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the meaning of the verse, O you who believe, if you uh, give one another loans alone uh, uh, and until a specific time, then write it. And also we find that the debt is not forgiven even for the martyr. That it is not, it doesn't go away. The one who gives his own life for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that the debt does not go away from him. And rather when the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa he was a funeral prayer was uh, or a funeral was brought forth. The Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam he asked, "Did he have any debt?" And he was informed that yes, he did have a debt. He sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said, "Then pray on him." And he wanted to leave off the pray, praying on the on this funeral prayer so that the people know the importance of the matter of debt and do not take it lightly. And rather, the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam he furthermore he said. That whomsoever takes the wealth of the people wanting to pay it back, Allah will pay it back for him. Meaning that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help him. If he wants, if he takes it alone from people and he wants to pay it back, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help him and aid him on paying it back. And that doesn't mean, of course, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will pay it back, meaning that he doesn't have to worry about it and doesn't have to return it to the people because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will pay it back. No, that, this is not what it means. But rather that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will aid him and paying it back. And whomsoever, in the continuation, whomsoever takes the wealth of the people wanting to destroy it, then Allah will destroy him. وَانْظُرُوا أَنَّ النَّبِيَ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ لَمَّا أَرْسَلَ مُعَاذَ إِلَى الْيَمَنِ وَأَمَرَهُ بِمَا أَمَرَهُ قَالَ وَإِيَّاكَ وَكَرَائِمَ أَمْوَالِهِمْ وَإِيَّاكَ وَكَرَائِمَ أَمْوَالِهِمْ يعني لا تأخذ النفيس من أموالهم لأن القلوب معلقة بها يعني خذ الوسط من أموالهم من مما هو من الزكاة ولذلك الزكاة مال قليل يجعل الله عز وجل به البركة الكثيرة 
يحافظ الله عز وجل على المال لأن الزكاة فيها نماء للمال وحفظ فيها نماء وحفظ نعم When the messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم he sent Mu'ad رضي الله عنه to, to the people of Yemen and he commanded him with what he commanded him in regards to zakat to the obligatory charity he said to him and beware of the best of their wealth meaning when you collect the zakat wealth from the people do not take the best of it and rather take from the middle do not take the worst or the best and rather from the middle and also we find that zakat in general it is a little bit of wealth that is taken from them from the wealth of the people and we find that in it although it's small we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts a lot of blessings in it it increases the wealth of the people and it protects the wealth of the people now wa kama kadhalika min hifz al-islam lil-mal hifz al-islam lil-mal al-yatim wa an-nahi an akl mal al-yatim wa kadhalika mal al-mar'a fa huwa muhtaram ولا يجوز لأحد ولو كان أقرب قريب لها وهو الزوج فإنه لا يجوز أن يأخذ من مالها شيئا إلا عن رضاها فقد يكون تكون المرأة غنية والزوج فقير كما كان ابن مسعود رضي الله عنه زوجته كانت تزكي على مالها وهو من فقراء الصحابة رضي الله عنهم جميعا وسألت النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم هل يجوز لها أن تتصدق على زوجها وولدها فقال النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم هي صدقة وصلة فمال المرأة محترم في الإسلام Also from the protection of the religion of Islam to wealth is that it commands us with the protection of the wealth of the orphans and that it is protected and respected and likewise the women their wealth is protected and respected it is protected and respected and cannot be taken, not even by the closest of her relatives, who is her husband. He's not allowed to take any of her wealth without her per- permission. Look at Abu, uh, Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anh. He was from the poorest of the companions, may Allah be pleased with them. And his wife, she was wealthy. And she gave, and she had wealth enough to give zakah. And she came to the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa to ask him if she was if she's allowed to give her husband from her zakah wealth, from her zakah money. And the Messenger وسلم, he said, Yes, it is both a zakah as well as a connection with your kins. وكبيع الفضول أيضا وهو أن يبيع يعني هو بيع ما لا يملك وكذلك يعني بعض البيوع التي جاء فيها من أكل أموال الناس بالباطل فإن المال محترم وحرمت كثير من البيوع لأن فيها إهدار للمال وفيها غبن وخداع وأخذ أموال الناس بالباطل وما يتعلق أيضا بالقمار ومن قال لصاحبه تعالى أقامرك فليتصدق وقال علم الحكمة من الصدقة لأن القمار يراد منه إدخال المال فعوقب بإخراجه فعوقب بإخراج المال صدقة لأنه لا ينبغي أن يتعلق القلب بالمال بحيث أنه لا يهمهم كيف يدخل عليه وإنما يتعلق به أن يدخل عليه في حل فإذا قال لصاحب تعالى وقامرك فإنه يتصدق وهذا لو كان يعني مجرد كلام لو قال حتى لو كان هازلا فإنه يتصدق لأن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم علقها بالقول من قال تعال نتقامر فإنه يجب عليه أن يتصدق وكل هذا يا إخوة يدلنا على أن الإسلام يحترم المال ويحافظ عليه ولذلك إن المبذرين كانوا إخوان الشياطين وقال سبحانه ولا تؤتوا السفهاء أموالكم وهذه الأموال بيّن سبحانه وتعالى أنها ماذا؟ التي جعل الله لكم ها قياما يعني تقيمكم المال يقيم الإنسان المال يقيم الإنسان ولذلك بيّن سبحانه وتعالى 
أنها هي من الأمور التي تقيمه وتساعده ولعل بهذا نكتفي وإن كان الكلام في المال شيء كثير ولكن كما يقال ما يريد كله لا يترك جله نسأل الله عز وجل أن ينفعنا بما قلنا وسمعنا والله تعالى أعلم صلى الله وسلم وبارك وأنا مع العبد رسول محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين Our Shaykh Abdullah said, I will conclude in regards to the protection of the wealth and the religion of Islam is the prohibition of usury and riba. And that it is impermissible. And likewise, it is impermissible for one to sell that which he doesn't have, and doesn't own. And likewise, the prohibition of many of the matters of selling, such as selling something that is unknown or selling uh, in any kind of transaction by which one intends to take the wealth of the people without right. And also from the protection of the wealth in Islam is the prohibition of gambling and betting the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So much so that he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, if one of you says to his brother, come, I will bet you, I bet you, then let him give sadaqah, let him give charity. The people of knowledge, they say that it is the person who says, I bet you, or he wants to bet, and gamble on a specific matter, what he intends is to increase his wealth. So he's punished by the opposite of that, that he is commanded to give zakat, to give rather sadaqah, charity, and, and because of that statement. And this is even if he says the statement as a joke, even if he says it as a joke. And likewise, from the protection of wealth, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prohibited upon us and warned us against um, wasting. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the meaning of the verse, Indeed, the wasters are the brothers of the shayateen, of the devils. And likewise, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forbade us from giving our wealth to the fool people and those who do not know how to, uh, how to deal with the wealth. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said in the meaning of the verse, and do not give the foolish people your wealth. And in the continuation of the, of the verse, of the ayah, we find that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us the value or some a part of what is the value of wealth. That Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, which Allah made, in the meaning of the ayah, which Allah made for you to establish yourselves. So we find that one by wealth, by way of wealth, one can establish himself and can um, and he, uh, uh, rectify many of his affairs. Our Shaykh Abdullah, he said, this is sufficient, although the discussion regarding wealth and the protection of wealth in Islam is of course a very wide topic and has a lot of details, but this is, as he mentioned before, those are examples. Uh, by which we understand this matter, bi-idhnillah ta'ala. Finally, we thank our noble shaykh. May Allah reward him with good for us. And may Allah increase his reward and multiply it multiple times. <laughs>